Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Ryan and Rodrigo. And this week we have a very special show for you. Um, we have our old friend and and very dear to our hearts, Fabio, who uh, used to be our brother and business partner at ABC Teachers, fellow teacher, fellow nerd, for me at least. And he is here to help us answer some very very interesting questions that our students ask us all the time about life in the United States. And I'm not really sure why students ask Fabio and Rodrigo these questions because they have never been to the United States, but my students ask me these questions all the time and they have to do with the ways that Brazilians can be confused a little bit when they travel there. And so, Rodrigo, can you can you start us off a little bit? Sure. Um, a lot of my students ask me that because, uh, first of all, some of them don't know, and then they ask me, and then we start talking about America. And they know I have a lot of American. I've always had a lot of American friends. You know, some more Americans than others. Uh, and so they asked me, I, they know, I, I, I know a lot about the, about American culture. Uh, some of them watched our videos, surprisingly, and they heard you, uh, telling everybody that I'm more American than you, uh, or Ali is more American than you. And I try to tell them it's not because I'm American, it's just because Ryan is Brazilian, uh, mostly because of that. Uh, and Fabio, well, look at the flag behind him. Uh, Fabio always, uh, Fabio has always loved American culture too. We're, we're both uh, uh, very big on that. Uh, mm. So, uh, both. Oh well, okay. Yeah, uh, I'm. Yeah, I, I have to say I'm bigger than Fabio uh, on American questions or on American issues. Mm. Yeah, uh, but we're both big, uh, so, so that's, that's uh, a thing we could talk about. <laughs> yeah, so um, one thing that my students always ask me, or one complaint or a claim that I hear that I get from my student is that uh, my students or they they tell me that ah oh, a friend of mine moved to America or I went to America and I spent a month there. Um, I whatever the the occasion is, and they complain about some things um, uh, because of the elections, because of politics, and because of in, uh, dissatisfaction with the country situation. A lot of Brazilian people decided to move to, to America, some to Canada, but uh, in this case to America. And when they um, and and they still have that idea of a promised land. Uh, they still have the idea of the American dream and that um, that everything is great over there. And I'm not saying it's not, but it's another culture. So it's very, some things are very different. And Brazilians tend to find trouble uh, with some things when they go there, when they get there, um, <clears throat> because of habits that are just very different, very different. So that's uh, that's pretty much Ryan uh, my my idea for the conversation. And what I'd like to do is because Fabio and I have never been to America, I'd like to ask you questions. I like to I like to ask you questions so you could explain a little better um, those situations. Okay, I have stories. I have. Uh, questions and, and, and um, ideas that I, I'm not so sure about. So you would help me as an insider, okay? Uh, I can try, you know but you know, I haven't lived there now for, for almost 10 years. It'll be nine years next year. So I, I hope that my knowledge about America hasn't gone out of date. And like you said, okay. I am almost more Brazilian than American now, so. We'll exactly. see. And also, uh, one thing that it's important to point out is that you you have lived in two two different states, right? Yeah. And in America, in... there are 50? Mm -hmm. There are 50 states. And kind of like Brazil, the states are very different from each other. 
So like here in Brazil, even though say Rio and Sao Paulo are very near to each other, the cultures in these two places are very different. And it's the same in the United States. Um, uh, I lived in Oregon and Washington, and these two states are more similar, but just the next state over is California. And in California, the culture is, is pretty different from where, from where I lived. And if you go to the other side of the country in New York or Florida or Texas, places like these, um, my experience is, is very different from people who live there, so. Okay. And, and not only is the culture different, but also uh, the laws are different, right? Each, every state decides on their own legislation, right? So uh, you, you, all you can say is you, you can give us a, a very good idea, but you can't, you can't give us a perfect idea, right? Because all states are very different, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, Fabio, um, Fabio uh, is going to be joining us today as our comic relief. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, we're not going to laugh at him, of course. We're going to laugh with him. Fabio is a pretty funny man. Okay. So we're not, guys, we're, we shouldn't laugh at him, just with him. Okay. Prepos mm. Remember the prepositions at and with, left at and left Not with. Not following. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, uh, all right. So, um, my, I, 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 I organized this into topics. Okay, as I learned with you, Ryan, uh, to break it down into topics. Uh, and I think that's the first one of the first um, big differences between Brazilian and Americans. Um, <clears throat> it's the planning and organization aspect of life. Uh, first, I would like to mention tardiness. That means being late for stuff, not respecting um, schedule, not respecting the time, the, the specific time of, of things, of appointments. Um, and I don't know if it's you or if it's uh, because we, Fabio and I had a, another American friend, Texan, and he was just like us. He, he was, he wasn't <laughs> very think... late, you know, it wasn't, it was, sorry. Well, it was just like us, not very late, but he was definitely, I don't think he, it was a little different than the other Americans I worked with. Yeah, so he, he's not a, a he's not the a parameter, but mm -hmm. uh, that's the word. I, so that's my that was my question. I remember Ryan and I talked to Ronald about this about how time is money. Time in America, this is a, a very big idea, very strong idea. Time is money, so you respect appointments, right? Um, what do you have to tell me about tardiness, Ryan, comparing Americans and Brazilians? Tell me your experience. Don't well, name names, please. <laughs> well, I can just say that when I was growing up, I learned from my from my parents and from lots of other other people around me that if I wasn't early somewhere, then I was late. That the only way to be on time to something was to be early. Uh, five minutes or 10 minutes early somewhere. That was how you were on time. And if you showed up exactly on time, that was actually being late. Um, and that's just the way that I was, that I was trained um, as a child. And I think that for most people in the United States, that's, that's the way it is. It's just a way of being polite and respectful of other people. Um, and here in Brazil, it's definitely a little different, but I don't know. I've, I've adjusted to it. And I think that, that Brazilian people are respectful and, and polite, but in different ways. Like, 
um, American people are very cold compared to Brazilian people. When you meet them, the most that you're going to get is a handshake. Um, and they won't want to talk to you about like your life and how your day is going. It's directly, directly to business, directly to whatever the topic is. But Brazilian people will want to talk to you. Oh, how is your family? And they'll give you a hug and they'll talk to you about your life and your day and they'll want to be friendly with you. And I think that's just a, a different way of being polite and, and respectful. Um, so like one thing compensates the other. Yeah, kind. I think so. Um, okay. And and since I was like raised to be um, punctual, I I can't not be punctual. It's impossible for me to be late. It you just feel bad. it feel bad and it it like hurts me when I'm late. Mm -hmm. um, but I've also gotten better, I guess about being warm with people. I'm not, I'm not Brazilian yet, but I am more friendly. And so I think I'm kind of getting both worlds a little bit, which is, which is nice. I really like that I am well, picking and, up. And the people you have to compare with is me and Ali. Uh, <laughs> and we're not exactly warm people. So, uh, but the first time that you gave me a whole body hug, I think it was, I don't think you ever gave me a whole body hug. Like, I don't think your arms ever crossed that barrier. <laughs> uh, <Wow>. So, <laughs> hugging, <laughs> what? No, there's, uh, there are many reasons. Like, okay, go on. Cause, well, there, there is know, one yeah. big reason for that. Mm. That, yeah, because you're like, American, and and right, yeah, that, like, that is the reason, yeah, I that's it, that's the reason. That's, sure, that's let's what go I with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. True. Uh -huh. All right, okay, okay, guys. Now, so, but now you can. Right. Can you now? I think Ryan thinks he can like take the world, right? <laughs> take the world Why? in his arms, like the yes, like take the world in his arms. I think he tried that, but well, yeah. Let's go on. We all right, all right. So, um, yeah. So I get it, I get then, it. like compared to the other Americans that you guys know, like Kate, that we that we talked to on here, and the other Americans that you guys worked with, how do I compare? Am mm. I the most organized and punctual? Am I in the middle? Am I what? What would you guys say? Um, compared oh, to, you want to go, Matego? You start. Um, I we have Travis and Kate. Kate came to Brazil when she was eighteen, so she was she had that teenage warmth, you know. Um, she was energized and pumped up all the time. Yay, you guys, come here, let me hug you. And so, uh, and and the other was Travis, which is from. The, from country Texas, you know, uh, like deep down in Texas. And he, the first time I saw Travis, he hugged me and he, he lifted me up. He, he that, that was the first thing he did. Yo, what up, man, come here. Yes, everybody was impressed. That's true. Like, oh, and an American he, doing that. Yeah, he lifted me up. Yeah. He was quite strong, so he could lift me up, you know. And um, but and the other one was Kip and Rusty. Um, Kip, I had I didn't have that much contact with him. Uh, he was he wasn't pretty warm. He wasn't warm at all. No, uh, warm. except he was well, when he had something to drink. Then he got warm, um, and. Uh, Rusty is not American, but uh, someone I can compare to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't yeah. don't say that in Canada, or you might. No, I don't know really? what they'll do. America, <laughs> they will say, yeah. "Man, you're gonna be sorry." Yeah, they might apologize <laughs> to you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, 
And Rusty <laughs> was not warm. He was like ultra polite, but yeah. not exactly warm. Sorry, who? Uh, Rusty. The, the, oh, the, um, okay. Mm -hmm. The uh, one from Little Blue, Blue guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you're, but you're, you're warm. You're warm. You don't hug a lot, but you're warm. You know, uh, but, I, okay. I can say you're warm. I I can say uh, Ryan nowadays is warm. Like, yeah. Um, I think you. The biggest difference is, is like sometimes I don't feel that Americans are interested very much in what you're saying. They're more like. Uh, so like, how's your mother? Mm, mm -hmm, okay, I see. And you're, yes. <laughs> and you seem to be interested in like, oh, like I know his yeah. mother, and I am asking because I want to know, you know. Yeah, that's okay. the biggest difference. Okay. Uh, now one other thing that is um, that is very different from. Um, like Americans and Brazilians is writing stuff down. No, um, no, no, yes. Like we, we 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 don't need paper in Brazil. We don't write anything down. We just shake hands, you know, like in in old Texas, old like seventeen <laughs> hundreds. Just shake hands and say, Oh yeah, that'll do. Okay? Yeah, I'll I'll take your let's, word. Let's start at school. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, and then and also uh, I'm, I'm mostly talking about writing down plans and objectives. Mm -hmm. Here in Brazil, that sounds uh, very much like coach talk, like, uh, you know, th those new life coaches uh, that try to sell you uh, a plan on how to be rich and they are really not rich at all that's why they're trying to sell you something um and so it sounds like that to us but to yes. you guys that's just a part of the process and as i learned it's a really how can i say uh sometimes it makes the process bureaucratic here in Brazil, but it's a it's very it's necessary and it helps because mm -hmm. it helps us organize our thoughts. When you have a plan and you don't write it down, it seems more like a dream that you might achieve or not, mm -hmm. and it's just ah, I might do it or I might not do it, and it's fine. Um, I don't know if it's because uh, if we did write down our plans, they would. Uh, so much of them would not happen in Brazil because of everything, because of how things are. And then we get frustrated, so we just don't write. But the fact is that we don't write down our plans and we don't write down our objectives. Um, are you raised to do that in America? Do you learn to do that in school or at home or I don't know? Is that a habit you, you get from when you're a child? Hmm. No, I... I don't think I got it as a as a child. I don't know why I do it. Like even these these videos that we do, I have a little notebook here mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I write down the things that we're going to talk about just to keep my mind more focused. Um, and I'm not really sure when I started doing it, I guess it may be in college because I took notes during class when the teacher was talking um, and I wrote down everything that they said. And so it started a habit then to keep me mm. more organized. Um, and then I just kept doing it after that. But that's yeah. not a thing that you that's... do, right? Like uh, other people do it too there. Yeah. Or not. But they're, uh, it's not as normal of a thing. It's, mm. not, uh, it's not as common as the being on time thing. Uh, okay. The being on time thing is something everyone does. And if you're a mm -hmm. late person, people do not like you. They're, Every state? Uh, yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. And there are late people. They definitely exist. Mm -hmm. But they're like, ah, that guy's late. Mm -hmm. I hate him. It's not the very, norm. Yeah. He's very bad and I don't like him. Mm -hmm. And 
Yeah. But this, the yeah. being super organized and taking notes, like, first of all, I am not very organized. I know people who are very organized. I am. I always hear that from organized people. <laughs> <laughs> My brother never said that. Ah, oh, no, but there is a. Yeah, There's just... a limit. There is a limit. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Uh, no, I, something, something I noticed uh, is uh, when we were talking to your friend, I think it's John, his name is John, he's a teacher, he's a, a, a elementary school teacher, and <clears throat> he said that uh, every day students write at least one page, yeah. and, uh, and then I, I started to ask my students that are teenagers, said um, last year, because this year doesn't count, said last year, how many compositions or how, how many times did you write in a week? And he said, in a week? Zero. I don't, I don't write. said, okay, in a month. Ah, maybe twice. Sometimes, depending on the month, we wrote once a week. And if the teacher was uh, harsh, if the teacher was strict, uh, twice a week. Mm -hmm. And in America, you write every day. Yeah, so that, uh, no, and you, every day for and sure. Not only that, but you, you organize your writing. You learn how to structure your writing. Before mm -hmm. you, you, you hand in, the, teach, hand in the, the writing to the teacher, you have to go through a process. So first, write a paragraph, talk to your friend, rewrite the paragraph, talk to your friend, write the introduction and the conclusion. Now you're ready to give it to me. Uh, yeah. And so that, that may be something important right oh for sure and i think i remember there was a whole semester of of high school um uh, english or or what john called it he called it language arts that was entirely focused on the the structure of writing that we just mm -hmm. wrote for a semester and they taught us oh, okay so this is an introduction paragraph this is a conclusion paragraph. This is how you mm -hmm. combine them. This is how you organize your thoughts. And we spent an entire semester of high school just learning how to structure uh, mm -hmm. a composition, um, I which I guess this. you guys don't do here. That's just not mm -hmm. something you learn. I would learn. say that we, we learn it maybe the same way, like a semester, but like I know, that, like the difference that you guys care and here like we we learned it but we we think ah that's that is not necessary you know we don't we don't like following uh, guidelines to to many things but like writing it's like oh should I, why do i have to learn a guideline to write just you know give uh, just pass on the information that i want you to pass yeah. i think that's yeah, the, the main thing Mm. And the pro but the problem of that is that my students, for example, when they need to write a composition, they t mm -hmm. they take thirty minutes before they start just thinking about what they write, and when you learn the process, uh, it helps for tests, for example, for test taking, it helps a lot. Or when you need to write an email for work, something like that, when you need to write up a manual. So it helps because you know exactly how to begin or not, not exactly, but you have a better idea and you don't get stuck before you start. Unless you're writing something artistic or poetic, if, if you want to just write something free of formats. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, but that's, if you need to write an article, an essay. Yeah, that's uh, totally true. Um, there was a, a class that, that I took about U.S. history. And the, the biggest part of the class was a test at the end of the year that was just writing compositions. We just had to write compositions in a certain amount of time. And if we passed, then we we passed. And if we failed, then the whole year was for nothing. Um, and so we just practiced writing these compositions the whole year. And something that I, I figured out was that like you said, unless it's an artistic writing, 
writing is just combining little pieces together and like like building a cabinet it it really has no art to it you just have to think all right it's the beginning of the essay write an introduction and you just use the pieces for an introduction and you have to put in the the specific information so if you're talking about america you use america things if you're talking about europe you use europe things but all of the pieces are the same and then the next is the middle part of the essay then you have the conclusion and you just have to put all of the pieces together and it's it's very boring but it's also very easy if you know how the pieces fit together it's not a complicated task and um now um connected to that something that you guys do a lot and we can we notice that when we watch uh produce show or a concert or a uh, an event you know like the super bowl uh i don't i don't see that uh the, the super bowl halftime show i don't see that happening in brazil not that way uh because for example you use the same stadium to you just they i don't know i, I can't even explain i don't even understand how you how they do it but they they just put everything up in 30 minutes and they put everything down in 10 minutes and then the game goes on and you say Jesus and Beyonce comes and and like a hundred dancers already and everything happens at, at, like it's uh, like clockwork you know exactly mm -hmm. at the second so one thing that I noticed that you guys do a lot is rehearsing for things like we rehearse but we rehearse twice or three times you guys rehearse a thousand times until the thing is no it has to happen perfectly until the thing okay. looks natural. Uh, Exactly. Yeah. So automatic we, that it looks not natural. Exactly. And we trust spirits to to be natural. Like uh, uh, it will look natural because I didn't rehearse. If I didn't rehearse, then yes, it, it shouldn't look mechanic. It will it will it can only be natural. And then you start doing it, and then just nothing happens. So. Um, um, Tell me, uh, do, you, do you have an experience with rehearsing for, for stuff? Yeah, well, like I used to be in a band, right? And we would practice for, for various performances. Um, and it's, of course, you have to practice for that. But I think the thing that you're talking about, the thing, the difference between um, being spontaneous and being rehearsed, um, the best example is really something that I've learned after coming to Brazil, and that's preparing classes. Um, and like when I first started teaching, I, I actually tried to do it the Brazilian way because I thought, ah, oh, no, I don't want to prepare because I want to be spontaneous and I want to give my classes more, more life to them. And my classes were terrible um because i wasn't prepared at all for anything but after i i taught for enough time and i had enough experience with uh, the materials and my students and all of the grammar then i didn't need to rehearse anymore i didn't need to prepare because i had already done the same material so many times mm -hmm. that i knew every possible eventuality that could happen and so i had rehearsed it by doing it in class a thousand mm -hmm. times um so my classes today are not prepared but they kind of are because i've done them before you know mm -hmm. yes you may maybe maybe for example if you have a student with something more specific maybe Maybe you try to find a new text. Maybe you try to find new material for that student, but uh, you don't. You don't have to prepare every class, every step of every class the way you did in the in the beginning, right? The way yeah. the, the the great Maya uh, taught us to do, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So or I think of be oh, man. intuitive. I'm trying to think of her name. She was a teacher at Central Britannica when we were there, and she would prepare every every second. Of her class, Michelle. Yes, it was Michelle. It was Michelle. She would prepare 
every every detail, every tiny detail of every single one of her classes. And I I really respect her for that level of dedication, but I cannot imagine doing that myself. I and to be honest, uh, if you're teaching European or American students, uh, preparation is more important. If you're teaching Brazilian students, because Brazilian uh, students are Brazilian, so they're more unpredictable. Uh, you prepare something and then you get to the class and there's somebody wearing a top hat dancing and you're like, what? What is happening here? Ah, oh, teacher, <laughs> today I brought my, I don't know, my kangaroo to class <laughs> and look and and class is over. Oh, let's talk about kangaroos. Ah, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, and then you <laughs> just... Sure. Um, so... Um, Sometimes we have to be the ones to bring the top hat kangaroo dancer. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and students love that in Brazil, right? Yeah. Um, actually, I have, a, I have a friend that went that had CELTA, the CELTA course certificate in, a, in England. And they, they looked at his country, origin country, and they said, well, why did you come all the way to England to have the course? He said, well, because here is the, the nation of English. That's and they said, well, Cambridge is from, you created CELTA here. So, and the guy said, oh, no, but Brazil, Brazil has a better course. Said, what? Yeah, why? Said, because in Europe, uh, people go into class and they are kind of, they, 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 their mind is kind of set that they need to learn and they're, going to have class so they don't uh, they're more organized or prepared I don't know in Brazil you have to be a teacher you have to prepare and you have to be an entertainer you have to tell jokes and you have to control people uh, mm -hmm. so um, some people come to Brazil to have the course because Brazilian trainers they teach things that nobody else teach like strategies uh, to improve your class so and I said, okay, I did, I did not know that. Uh, so that was, that was uh, very nice to learn. Um, well, okay. Um, Fabio, do you have any fun stories or anything to say about organ planning your organization before I go to the next topic? Mm, I, I had something, but I... While you were talking, I was like, eh, there was that time, but I can't remember now. Well, uh, now, like, there's Zoom, you know, online classes. And everything you knew, kind of, of course, it's still very useful. But it's, it's too new, you know. Nobody knows how to use it properly. You can prepare classes as much as you want. But still, it's not the same thing, you know. Opening uh, students, they learn how to cheat. Like uh, they record videos and they put it on loop, <laughs> you know. And then they're like, oh, let's see. Uh. And then you're like, no, he's... why? Like, like, like you're like, no, he's paying too much attention. Then it's wrong. <laughs> then it, it really is like 100% of the time you're like, man, can you tell me this thing? And then you ask him the question and, or, and they, they don't answer. And they're like, ah, oh, teacher, what? Uh, like I, I had a problem here. So everybody's learning. But it seems that students are always one step ahead. You know, <laughs> you're very creative. Keanu Reeves. Uh, Keanu Reeves made that a very famous strategy on speed. I was just the thinking of speed. speed. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly what he does. <laughs> to save the bus. Yeah. Oh, nice. this, okay. they don't even know about this, this movie, you know? <laughs> no? No, they don't know about Keanu Reeves. Only that he's a sad actor. Uh, and, True. Well, <clears throat> so... Now, um, moving on to the next next topic, it's a bit more, it's a bit uh, hairy, but it's fine. Ryan can tell us all about it. Uh, this is about police interaction, okay? 
Uh, I believe that all three of us have never been harassed by the police so much because of where we live or because of um, uh, the places we used to go or not go, like me. And I was at home, so I, I wasn't harassed by the police. Uh, but a lot of people are. Uh, a big part of the population is... But uh, um, you're not arrested, but... You have been okay. stopped by the police, right? Once in my life. Okay. Once. And and everything went very well. They were very polite. Uh, Where was it? Was it cousin? in Santo André or São Caetano? Santo André. Santo André. Santo André. I, I have been robbed 13 times, but stopped by the police uh, once. Uh, and my cousin Chiba, he is uh, because he grew up in a in a poor area. When the police stopped us, he just got out of the car like I'm. It's I'm. Look, my hands are up. Everything is fine. Uh, but the police guys, they were all the police off. The police guys, <laughs> police officers were all very polite. Everything was fine. Nothing happened. I saw uh, police approach like near my house. They stopped the car and they three police officers got out of the car with machine guns, yelling in the middle of the night. And <laughs> the car was all black because of the windows. And, and uh, when the people got out of the car, it was just a very simple guy and a mother with a baby. And and then the police, oh, oh, sorry, lady, please. Then they got polite. Uh, but the approach seems different in Brazil and in America. In Brazil, we don't seem to have, uh, I don't know, I really don't know. But we don't seem to have, um, uh, how can I say, uh, oh, my God bureaucracy for that like in america you guys have the the miranda rights that you read that police officers have to read when they not approach mm -hmm. but when they arrest somebody uh but in america you have the approach where you have to stop your your car your uh police car like 10 feet behind the other car and then you yeah that are a lot of steps first. to follow right yes exactly uh so ryan um what what do you have to say about that um, about police approach in both countries? Uh, well, I I don't have a lot of experience with it because I have never really encountered the police. Um, I I only I only ran into the police one time, and it was because I was in Seattle with some friends and we were gonna smoke some marijuana and we went to the park i know crazy right in seattle yeah who does that <laughs> uh and we went to the park where everyone does and we sat down to to smoke and out of the bushes appeared a police officer and he was like uh guys come on even though at the time it was like, I wouldn't say it was legal, it was decriminalized in the city. The, the mayor had told the police to not, not mess with people who were smoking, but it was still technically illegal. So the policeman came up to us and was like, guys, get out of here. You need to leave. And that was my only interaction with police officers ever. Okay. It was... I was stopped twice. Once I was uh, coming back from work when I worked at the at that. Oh God, what is the name? The steel company. You know, I don't know how to call it. And the the factory point, where they make yes, steel. Is yes. Yes. Foundry. Found found foundry. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So. They stopped me and they pointed. I was uh, like, and they, they they pointed the gun at me, 
because I was <laughs> where I was because you were too white. You had a seizure. You were just too white for them. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, "What? Well, what is happening here?" And then I was like, "In the no, no, don't do that." And I was like, and I kept <laughs> doing that. I was removing the helmet, and they're like, "Are you crazy?" And, and they, 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 they were not like. They saw that I, I didn't do anything, but they kept explaining to me like, "Man, when the police stops you, you cannot do what you did. What you did, you know, because I, I wasn't like this. I was like, and then I started removing the helmets like naturally. And they were like, "No, man, you can't do that. What are you? What? But I, I didn't feel. I don't. They were like very, not angry." Aggressive. Just no, 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 no. Not aggressive. They were like worried. Treat. Yeah, that that was it. They were worried. Like man, I, maybe like if a, it was like me, a parent who's like, I'm yes, not angry. Like, I'm just disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> they were like no adrenaline rush. I don't know because yeah. something bad was happening there, and then they were like, oh, where were you? I was working. And nothing much. They just explained to me that it was very what I did was very dangerous because they could interpret what I did as like getting a gun that was hidden or something, mm -hmm. and it made sense. Yeah, and something that I something. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, no, tell your no. yeah, the yeah. Other story. The other story, okay. And the other time I was playing soccer. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but I was a teenager, but I was already tall. <laughs> That's why. And maybe they thought I was uh, an adult, I don't know. And they started, you know, just checking if we had stuff like drugs. But we didn't. And then, but he was, he was uh, like Montega said, he was polite. Nothing much happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think, like, an another thing is that I grew up in a very small town mm. and uh, the police officers there were like my parents friends one of them was my dad's cousin was a police officer in canby and there was a when i was in high school actually there was this big like um a controversy because the chief of police in canby and some other police officers got caught up in some oh man i'm trying to think of the details right now it had something to do with with giving oh man my mom is going to correct me when i say it giving steroids to a girls basketball team in another city to i don't even it was a whole <laughs> like corruption scandal that involved athletic program right. it was a whole deal and so the, the chief of police had to resign and my dad's cousin became the chief of police in Canby okay. when I was there. And so in these small towns, like, you know, the cops, right? And so they're mm. not going to like do anything to you and you're not going to be like, ah, screw that guy and run away. Cause how, where, how can you run? You're going to see him the next week. <laughs> And I remember I was watching uh, my girl, my my girl in the movie, right, with Macaulay Culkin. And when when the boy, well, spoiler alert, when the boy dies, uh, they go, <laughs> they go to to um, Veda's house to tell her father that your 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 daughter's friend just died. And he and they they treat him by by their first name, so. Like everybody knows one another, right? Mm. In a small town, it's just like you said. Okay. Yeah. True. Um, yeah. And okay. so, but it's yeah. very different in in the big cities, like in Seattle, where I lived for a while. Of course, you don't know the cops because it's a very big city, but even even bigger cities, it's it's even worse because sometimes the the police don't even live in the city where they work. They like commute in from another another city. And so they're very, I don't know what the word, alienated 
from the place that they're supposedly protecting. Mm -hmm. Because they're not even citizens of the city that they're police of. Mm, did not know that. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that either. I thought you had to be a citizen of that city to be a cop there. No. Okay. Um, all right. And um, but the most the 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 biggest difference to me is the approach uh, here in Brazil. If especially if you watch shows like Cops, you know, uh, I forgot the name of the shows in Brazil. Uh, Policia Novi Uno Zero. I don't remember. If you watch those shows, it seems that every everything every time they have to go after somebody it's just like go, 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 and it's like a high speed chase all the time and people are just walking on the streets get out of the way and shooting uh it's always like that because of course there's a criminality here is higher and so and in in america it seems uh well, have you ever watched Cops, the original Cops show? Mm, I have. Yes. That's how it is. Yes. You're describing yes. Cops. I was, I was like, is he, is he talking about the Brazilian one or the American one? Because that's yes. exactly what happens in the American one. They're like, uh -huh. get him, get him. And then the car vroom, drives like <laughs> yeah. through a group of people. And all the people dive out of the way to not die because the cop car is about to kill them all. That's, that's Cops, man. And okay. yeah, it's very dramatic because I was watching a thing recently that showed how um, the police organizations actually hired or partnered with the TV show so that the TV show would have a cool show and they would make money and the police organizations would look cool and dramatic and badass. And they worked together to make a show so the cops would seem super like badass Arnold Schwarzenegger types. And so that's Here why. In no, in the United States. There, that, that happens in Brazil too. There's of course a, it does. There was one or two shows that exactly. That was the original exactly idea. Like the original show okay. Cops. Well, that was that was what happened. And so right. this image that you have of of cops from the TV shows is all produced. So it's more like edition than real life. Right. Yeah, it's like the real world. Okay. It's like a reality TV show. Okay. All right. Now moving on from cops to something kind of related to cops, which is uh, um, drinking and the limits of drinking. Okay. Cops are involved because they have to control that. Um, uh, should I use the word cops? Is it is it okay to use the word cops, or they don't like it? Is that offensive sure. to cops? Okay. Well, uh, so something that my Brazilian students complain, have complained, and will complain, and always complain, is that when they go to, well, before they find out the perks of having a fake ID, uh, all of them do. So, um, <clears throat> and first thing, it's in the most notorious thing is that there's a 21 age limit for drinking right i don't know if it's in every state but it's a 21 age limit um you have to be 21 to buy liquor and if you um at a store or at a nightclub right or a bar to anywhere. get in the nightclub yeah to get to in get the in. nightclub you have to be 21 right mm -hmm. okay so uh, I have something that I have no idea of is how do how are I know they they I know they how can I say they skip that law they they break that law but uh, how are eighteen year olds supposed to have fun if they can't drink <laughs> like when you're seventeen to twenty one that's the age you you if you want to you should drink. If you don't want to, okay, you don't need to, even after you're 21. But if you want to, that's the age you're supposed to drink. Uh, here in Brazil, that's the way. Uh, so, do you have any stories about this age limit uh, that your mom can hear? Because some of them uh, maybe. Well, like you said, Brenda won't be able to. 
it's not that hard to get alcohol if you're under 21. First of all, you have friends that are over 21 that will get it for you. Second, you can get a fake ID, which is not that hard. And third, there are a lot of stores that will sell to you. Uh, even though they're not supposed to. Okay. Um, that, like, that, that is a thing that I, you know, never thought about. Because when you watch movies yeah. and everything you hear from there, it's like never happens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But like yes. uh, in, in like super bad, remember he had that terrible fake ID and the guy at the liquor store didn't even care. He, uh -huh. he barely looked yeah. at it. He was like, yeah, okay, whatever, man. Get out of here. And so that that's, happens. yes, all the time. All the time. Okay. And when I lived in Seattle before I was 21, there was a gas station just down the road that knew, that absolutely knew everyone that was buying beer was not 21. But he didn't care. You had, what, what you had, to, you had uh, to be under 21. Yeah. What happens? What happens if it, yeah, like if the, the law finds out that the place I is think, selling. Uh, don't do that. A lot of things can happen. You can get a fine. Up mm. to he can be mm. shut down. I think uh, okay. closing the business is possible. But mm -hmm. I, I think for some of these places, like almost all of their money comes from selling beer to people under mm -hmm. 21. So they don't care. Mm. Yeah. Right. Uh, something else that's different in America is um, um, another limit that you have that you can't drink on the streets, right? You can't show the 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 empty the, the bottle or I forgot there's a name. Yeah, the bottle on the street. You have to. It has to be inside a paper bag, right? Mm -hmm. That's you why know, you, see movies, that you see in movies. The solution is very Brazilian. Oh, I can't oh, show. My God, yes. <laughs> the I can't show the bottle. So, okay then. See, no. Just put a bag. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, most of the country is like this, and it also includes the beach, right? So theoretically, you're not supposed to be drinking beer or alcohol at the beach, but just like the under 21 thing, nobody really respects it. And you know what they say is it's not illegal if you don't get caught. Mm -hmm. So as long as there are no police officers at the beach, then it doesn't matter. Then you can drink at the beach. Um, but like drinking on the street in a city, that will be more, more respected because there are actually cops on the streets. What about selling liquor in the morning, like in in a at a Seven Eleven store, for example? Can you or at a bar? No, bars don't open in the morning, right? I don't know how how does that work? Because here in Brazil, you if you walk around anywhere, six a.m. There's people just having cachaça for breakfast every day, a lot. That's normal here. How does that work I, in America? I remember you, Rodrigo, telling me a story of you were out late, super late one night at like five or six in the morning at a bakery or a boteco. And there was an old man in a very nice suit. And he was having sardines and cachaça. And you couldn't figure out if it was like a nightcap. Was he finishing his night or was it breakfast? It wasn't. Mm, yes. You, you, Yes. It was impossible to it tell was, what was going on. It was a, that was around 4.30 a.m. or 5 a.m. I, I was still out late with my yeah. friends. I was 18, 19, and he was like 55, 60. Uh, he looked like, I don't know, a security guard or something of sorts. And he was wearing a nice suit. He was uh, quiet, just not uh, drunk or anything. But he ordered that. Give me, I, I, I want sardines and uh, a glass of, we, we call it whitey here, branquinha, little whitey. And, <clears throat> and a glass of the uh, or the evil one. 
<laughs> the evil one, Marvade. And he started to just, the sardine he was eating, it was like bread and butter and a cachaça like coffee and milk. Like, mm, nice. <laughs> and I, oh my God. So, um, how does that, I don't know, what, what do you, what is it like in America? Well, um, every state is a little different for its rules. I know in in Washington, you can't sell alcohol after 2 a.m. Until, oof, I don't know what time in the morning it opens again. Uh, I don't know exactly what time. Yeah, maybe something like that. But after 2 a.m., all the bars have to stop selling alcohol. And so that's why you have like last call which is an expression that means oh. the, the bartender will say, okay, last call. And then everybody can order their last, their last beer, their last drink. Um, and then the bar will usually stay open a little bit after two, but they can't sell anymore. Okay. Here uh, in Brazil, some, uh, some bakeries, they, but this is uh, specific uh, from that bakery. Uh, they put up a sign. Uh, we don't sell alcohol before 11 a.m. Okay, especially if it's a bakery in a nice neighborhood. And then some people say that is discriminating against people that drink because people want. If people want to drink, they should be able to drink. And well, that's offensive to people that drink. Uh, <laughs> But bakeries, bakeries do that. Bakeries, uh, some bakeries control. No, no, because if they don't, then there will be a lot of people drinking and getting drunk at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., while other people are getting in for coffee, for breakfast, for coffee. So, <clears throat> but I get it. Okay. So drinking in America is it's problematic for Brazilian people because Brazilian people like to have barbecues at the beach and drink on the streets and get out of the house wearing flip-flops and put the shirt open and drinking and eh, qual é? No. Uh, <laughs> vamos curtir. I don't know. I don't know. And they just, no, let's have fun. That's it. And then Rodrigo, a police officer would come. I thought we had that here in Sao Paulo. But then when I went to Rio, my God. It's like, I, I didn't, I, I was like, I'm not Brazilian then. Because this, yeah. this is, you know, everything you're saying, you're like, you're saying as a joke, but it's not. It's much more there. Yeah. Many, th because it's many a, things they told me hot was place. true. I was like, no, nah, it's not. Fun but place. it was, everything was true. So, and they, you barbecue on the beach and you take your barbecue stand with you and your barbecue is there and then you throw everything there and then you drink and you get drunk and you throw all the bottles uh, like there. You just leave the bottles there. And so um, this is Brazilian people complain. Ah, I went to Miami and I couldn't drink at the beach. I couldn't even drink outside my house. So people complain about that a lot. Um, okay. Um, but there are a few places that you can, like New Orleans and Las Vegas are two places where you can walk around with a drink. Well, Las Vegas, if you, it would be insane if you couldn't, right? Yeah. Uh, that's the whole point of the place. It's like, come yeah. here to drink. To do you whatever want. you want. I mean, uh, gambling is legal, exactly. prostitution is legal, so, ah, of course, <laughs> drinking is legal. Um, and I think there are some other cities where it's legal, too, but I don't know what they are. Okay. Well, Can't um, hear you. Yeah, yeah, he's muted. Um, and okay. then some some states like Washington, the only place that you can buy hard alcohol mm. like whiskey or vodka is in a special store. You can't go to the grocery store and buy it. There's a special at like the liquor store at the liquor store. Yeah. And 
that's just how it is. You have to go to the liquor store to get liquor. Um, yeah, and, super bad is like that. Yeah, like in super bad, exactly. Um, and some <laughs> states, I think there are only two or three of these now. All of the alcohol is in a liquor store, not just the the whiskey. Is beer is also in the liquor store. Okay. Liquor stores owners are rich. Yeah, mm. yeah. A lot of the time, it's a government store. In Washington, the the liquor stores are run by the government. Okay, that's kind of communist. But okay, okay. I'm not the one to say that. Uh, to judge. So um, now moving on from drinking to something kind of related to drinking, uh, that is school life, mostly high school and college. Okay, oh. so and you start to drink uh, because you're young and because um, school life makes you want to drink sometimes. So uh, that's um, something that this is it, like. Things are very different in school in America, right? Not only the, the pedagogic parts, the educational parts, but the organization of a school, right? The curriculum is different. We talked about, like in America, you don't learn about grammar at all. You learn very little about grammar. If you have a problem, then the teacher helps you with that specific problem. And in, But you learn a lot about writing. You practice a lot of writing. In Brazil, we learn about grammar every year a lot and it's deep philosophical grammar and we're on the sixth grade and we have to analyze the structure of the sentence and we don't even know yes. what the words mean what the word means so uh, the curriculum is very different but um what i think what most brazilian people have difficulty to adapt is the time the beginning of the year the beginning of the day the end of the day not in college mostly in high school so, um, what is the, um, how does it work in the high school, Ryan? Well, let's see. Um, I think the best way to explain it is that the school systems in the United States are not uh, organized centrally. Like, there is no national school curriculum. There's no national mm. school organization. All of the schools are run by the, the local cities. Um, the states have a little bit of control, a little bit of central planning, but the most authority is coming from the cities. And um, because of this, and because this goes all the way back to when they started and, and why schools started, um, they're really based around the farming schedule. So um, that's why we have a summer vacation is because parents needed their kids to have summer vacation so they could go and help do farming things in the summer. And mm. then when that was over, then they could start the school year. And so that's why we start the school year in September after the summer farm activities were done. Mm. And so that's why the school year starts then. And it goes all the way until the next summer when, again, we needed kids to work on the farm. But now nobody works on farms anymore. And so that's not necessary. But it's still the, the normal thing. Tradition. It's still there. It's tradition. Exactly. You see, my, one of my theories about, uh, about why the world is as chaotic as it is, is that it's that uh, people don't work on farms anymore. If you, if if anyone worked for a year, a month in a farm, just farming anything, uh, we would have a much better perspective of every of, of anything. Mm -hmm. Like to say, oh my God, I remember that time I worked on a farm, so I have to be grateful for what I eat. I have to be <laughs> grateful for my friends. I have True. to be grateful for my life. Yeah, I lost a finger while I was farming. I lost a friend <laughs> while I was farming. <laughs> I lost my, I don't know. So um, farming builds up a, a person. Uh, <clears throat> okay, well, that's nice. I didn't know about it. Um, uh, what time, uh, what, what is the time, like in a day? When do you start and when do you finish? So the other 
a thing is that that Brazilians find different, I know, is that the school, first of all, goes all day. There's not like morning school and afternoon school. It's all day mm -hmm. classes. And um, like the high school that I went to, we started at 730 and our last class finished around three. But then we had activities in the afternoon after school. Like I had basketball or swimming, but there were also like clubs, like debate club or farming club or <laughs> whatever. Farming all kinds club. of different. Yeah, like the farming club learned about farming things, like how to operate farming tools. And they went on uh, uh, field trips to different places and they had competitions to see which farming <laughs> club could like raise the biggest pig every year cool. you know <laughs> I, yeah. and a bunch of kids just uh talking about stuff like papa gary told me when when he yes. came to to the school and we were talking uh, Papa, i don't know if i told you the story uh, guys everybody that's uh watching this um papa gary is ryan's grandfather and he he ryan took him there because i love so much um, older people and I love America so much and Ryan said well I think Rodrigo is going to have his mind blown so Papa Gary sat down and I started talking to him and after two minutes he was telling me about his uh, you know I live where I live I have like two I don't know how much how many acres of land uh, it's good to have lands and <laughs> he it's good to have lands and he said he started talking to me and telling me about the new lawnmower that he bought uh, and the uh, machine and the engine. So it, the engine is, uh, and he, he told me about everything and I didn't understand most of it because I don't know about farming. And, but I was like, please, please continue. Tell me more. <laughs> uh, so, okay. A bunch of kids talking about farming that would be very very cool in brazil yeah yeah um, and like at my school um the the farming kids one of them actually drove his tractor to school one day okay he was the cool kid <laughs> yeah uh <-huh>. <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, yeah that was the cool kid kid yeah uh, that's nice Okay, uh, now something something not so nice that I I would like to talk about it. Um, um, and I think I think this is the uh, one of the last things I I have to say. Uh, it's about bullying. Okay, there's just one more topic after that, but bullying. Um, and here in Brazil, there's a me 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 culture now. Not people that uh, complain out of nothing no 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 people that like to say that everything is me 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 everything is just blah 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 everything is yada 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 and so people uh belittle bullying people um, make bullying like seem something not important or not bad at all no like this this is normal this happened it, this happened when i was a young kid um but i see i remember you told me that in a, in in your town there was a high school. How many high schools there was there were in your town? Just one. One. Okay. So, what happened if you were bullied? Could you move? Could you just you had to move in, to go to another town, or no? You just yeah. no took it. Yeah. You had to solve it. But yeah, you had to. It was. I think it was different then because we didn't have the, the social media. So like you bullying wasn't a 24 hour a day, seven day a week ah. activity. So if you got bullied by some buddy, you just avoided that person. Okay. But today you can't do that because they can yeah. just bully you all of the time on social media and you can never get away from them. Yeah, true. I hadn't thought about it. It's much worse. Uh, so it's uh, I when I thought about it, it was it, it's worse in America because you can't change school. Here, 
if you're bullied too much and you talk to your parents and maybe your parents can just take you to another school because there are lots of school here, private schools, public schools. Uh, but in America, you just can't, especially if you're in a small town, right? And everybody knows you, so you feel the shame uh, the, uh, that you feel is bigger, right? Yeah, when that is not existent here, right? No, no. Uh, I, I felt something similar when I lived at the beach at Praia Grande because everybody, uh, there, were, there were only a few people living where I lived in my neighborhood. So the, the guys that bullied me, I knew them. If I went out on the street, I would see them. You know, one of them was the son of the owner of the supermarket. The other was the son of the own of the of a woman that worked somewhere else. So, I never went to the supermarket with my mother. And if I went, I was hiding because I didn't want them to bully me in front of my mom. Uh, so, I I felt that for two years of my life. But in a big city like Brazil, no, like. like uh, Santo André or São Caetano, even? No, I never. That never happened. Never happened. Just, so if you ask your mother to transfer you to another school, like, like why didn't yeah, you? Just, because I was ashamed. I was a teenager mm -hmm. and I was ashamed. I didn't. I didn't want to tell her that I was bullied. You know. Ah, okay. Um, I wanted to. So not her so much. My father. I wanted to solve the problem. You know. I told my mom. Uh, I wanted to solve the problem, and sometimes I just told my dad, and he said, "Well, you just uh, be a man, man up. You have to figure it out, something like that, you know." Uh, so, um, uh, but but uh, that was just when I lived at the beach. After that, or before that, I I didn't go through it. Uh, but it was difficult. So I that's why I imagine being bullied in a small town knowing everybody and you there's nowhere to go you just can't escape you know and now when you have facebook and, and instagram and twitter mm -hmm. it's yes it must be horrible mm -hmm. yeah the other day i was talking to a student she's an adult now and she she asked me uh when you were at school like were you bullied and stuff and then i explained to her that things were very different like we we were like everybody was or at certain at a certain certain point, but it was it's, it's like like you said, Ryan. It didn't go on like you were bullied at school, but then there was no social media. Like you just avoided the person, or and and here we could like transfer to another school, like most cases if it if it was very bad. Um, but and then I explained to her that, that, that like what you said, and she was like, "Oh, I'd never thought about it." And then I had I, I had never thought about it too until she asked me. And I was like, "Oh, so it's much worse today." And I can see the difference. Uh, they are very affected by it nowadays. They're like they're they're ruined as. Uh, as teenagers, you know, mm -hmm. very self-conscious about something, everything. Something that's different, uh, it's very different when you compare bullying with just making fun or having fun, mm -hmm. is that uh, being bullied is when it happens to you frequently. And it mo it's mostly to, to one person. Being bullied is when you're the target of bullying, you know, uh -huh. uh, yes. making fun, you're making fun, you're like, you make fun of your friend, and then you participate mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the joke, in a, in a bullying. But when you're bullied, you don't participate. You're the, you're the butt of the joke. Mm -hmm. you're, you're the only one that gets, gets laughed at. That's bullying. Uh, so that's why some people, most people say, no, everybody was bullied. No. no. It's, it's because they some don't understand the concept. Yes, exactly. Some people were bullied, but most people just had fun. Um, so that is um, that, okay. But bullying, I we we brought this concept from America, right? That's why I wanted to talk about it. Here in Brazil, it was just uh, Brazilian people, you know. Uh, we're Brazilian, and we started to watch movies about bullying, and 
we had bullying, we always had bullying here, but we brought the concept, we started talking about it, and we brought the concept ready from America. Um, do you remember if, uh, in your school days, if there was a lot of bullying or no, not that much? Is That's just something that happens. Uh, I don't know, because I think, I, just, I feel like, there was bullying and there was also making fun and it's hard looking back to know the difference now okay. and so it's it's hard for me to say okay. and it's really hard like i said nice. to compare because the, the the situation is so different today to yeah. that. Okay, yep. So school life, uh, the, like to sum up, school life is the same but very different in Brazil and in America, right? You have, we have similar problems, bullying and um, extra classes and, well, you have the same problems, but uh, the structure is very different, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think, Ryan, the outcome is different in Brazil and in America? Like a, a person that leaves high school in, in America is uh, not more educated, but how different do you think it is, a person that leaves high school in America and in Brazil? Well, I was very lucky because I went to a public school, but the public school that I went to was very, very good. Um, mostly because the small town that I was in, everyone in the community is very involved in the in the school like a few years ago i i traveled to go to my sister's graduation from high school and they filled the the football stadium with with people from the whole city to watch these these kids graduate from high school and it wasn't just the families and the friends of the kids it was just random people from the community that wanted to come and and see these these kids that they had watched grow up as like their piano teacher or their their little league soccer coach or all kinds of different ways they've participated in in the the growing up of these kids um they wanted to be there for their graduation and i don't think that that's normal in the rest of the united states or the world yeah, okay. Um, so I was pretty lucky to have such a great place to grow up. Um, that was really cool. That was that should that would be a really good cool movie. It would be a cool movie, except there wouldn't be any tension. It would just be kid grows up in a great place, <laughs> and <laughs> and that's, that's positive it. stuff. <laughs> yeah, equals to <laughs> no money. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> True. All right. Then moves to Brazil. That would be yeah. the tension. There we go. There's <laughs> the tension. Wow. Okay. That's well, um, I think this is the, the video is uh, too long. So um, just a, another topic to talk about, which is cleaning habits. But I'll, I'll talk about it very quickly. Um, and we talked about it today, right, Ryan? Um, you you did the cleanup, the Saturday cleanup, and I asked you, Ryan, did you wash the bathroom? Did you wash the kitchen with water and soap? And you said, well, Ali helps me wash the bathroom and the kitchen, we don't wash it because there's a bunch of wooden cabinets, right? Mm -hmm. So it would, the wood would just expand and get uh, bad. So this is one of the main things here in Brazil, we wash our bathrooms and we wash our kitchens um, and we also have wooden cabinets but it's I don't know it's different um, how do you clean your bathroom and your kitchen if you don't wash it well you got to take like a rag and wipe everything with uh, maybe bleach um, but you don't okay. you don't wash it with the hose you just have to wipe it down with the rag and that's that's all you do. Um, 
<laughs> and Allie reminded me yesterday when I told her we were going to talk about this, that a few years ago, we went with my family to a, a beach house in Oregon, and the bathroom there actually had carpet in it. <laughs> no, <laughs> my God, man. The bathroom? What? Jesus. Yeah. No, that is, sounds weird. Which yeah. is weird. But it was an old house from, like, I think the 1970s when this was, like, a style then to put carpet everywhere. I bet they even okay. put carpet on the walls because... In the 1970s, they were just like carpet everywhere, everything carpet. Bro, um, well, okay, no, I don't like carpets so much. Um, I I do, I do understand the use of carpets in America because it makes the place cozy and warm. Uh, but um, in Brazil, it does not make any sense. It's already warm enough no. here. Thanks. We don't. We don't yes. need the warmth. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And and so like the construction of of things here in Brazil is built for that. Like the bathrooms have a have a drain so you can wa you can wash everything with the hose and the water will eventually go mm -hmm. out. And the kitchen also, although my kitchen is designed really stupidly because the the drain is on one end but the the tilt of the room yeah. is the drain is at the high end okay. so the water goes yeah. away from the drain. wow yeah. it was the same way in the school it's called a yeah. ch challenging ki kitchen yeah exactly yeah. You don't get uh, the concept um one of my students told me the story that she was she lived in maine maine first of all why but okay and then um she told me she the bathroom was dirty. She said, no, the bathroom was horrible. The cats had a sandbox in the bathroom, so she took everything out from the bathroom. And she started to wash the bathroom. She got a bucket and she started to wash it. And she noticed that the, the water would just not go anywhere. She said, what, what's going on around here? And she started looking for the drain. She called her mom, her, her exchange mom. And her mom said, what are you doing? There's no drain. And she said, how do you wash the bathroom? We don't wash the bathrooms. And she said, what? and she was like, how do they not wash a bathroom? Uh, so that was, um, <clears throat> that was different. Uh, and something else that I always noticed is movies that when people were, people just turn on the, the, the faucet and the, the starter starts to flow to overflow then there's water in the yeah. hallway and i and i was always thinking uh, what why doesn't like <laughs> true it just goes to the drain yes yeah. that's stupid why it just goes why down is the it drain. a problem but there's yeah, but there's no drain it's a minor inconvenience so but my god why yeah. <laughs> like the wet bandits, right? Yes, like yes. the wet bandits. Yes. So, <laughs> those scenes make no sense in Brazil. We My God, like... I have never thought of that. Man, when do you think uh, of that? I always saw. Uh, I I was the scenes like that in movies, and then I was like, part. I felt the, I felt it was strange, but I never thought about it. My God, yes, that doesn't make any sense for us. <laughs> <laughs> but the wow. but the American houses are made just like the cabinets here. They're made of wood usually, so it's not a good idea to use too much water because you're gonna damage the house. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. That's true. Um, okay, well, I think uh, the, the the last thing in something very different is that here in Brazil we throw toilet paper or dirty toilet paper in the trash can and in America you throw it in a in the toilet right and you just flush it um, and in this specific part I agree with you Americans <laughs> mm -hmm. we should we should all do that but if we do it once then it clogs the toilet and you just no, we can't. Uh, but that thing, I think it's better. Just 
throw it in the toilet and you flush it and it goes away and you don't have dirty paper you don't have to deal with that it just goes away mm -hmm. uh, well um well i'll i'll wrap up but i do have a, a funny story about that first and it's that um tom my friend tom was teaching english in korea and they do the same thing as brazil they put their their dirty toilet paper in a in a can and he he was wrapping up his stay in korea and he was already kind of sick and also homesick he probably had some korean virus and he was very eager to get home so he had packed all of his things and he was going down to the road to catch a cab but it was monsoon season and so it was pouring mm. down rain and just like in brazil everybody leaves their garbage just out on the street but of course when it rains the garbage just sort of flows down the street like a big river and so mm. tom was waiting on the on the street with like an umbrella for his taxi to to arrive and there was just a river of shit literal shit flowing okay. past him and then a bus comes shooting down the road and he doesn't see it he doesn't have time to get out of the way because he has all of his luggage there and he gets flooded with dirty dirty toilet paper water all over him all over his luggage all over um, every thing that he owns at the moment so there's no way he can change he can't change his clothes because all of his clothes are in wet and he has to he has to come home he has to fly home in those clothes oh my god that's um so that's when coronavirus happens yeah, yeah. that, that like was the that. actual origin of coronavirus yes yes <laughs> All right. Okay. And Tom is a is a a germ germaphobe, right? Yes, a big germaphobe. Oh my god. Yeah. The story only <laughs> got worse. Yes. So he came he came in the in a, in the airplane probably crying like Adam Sandler in fifty first yes. dates, like oh just screaming. Yes. Okay. Or imagine the, the worst O C D outbreak that your brother has ever had and then multiply it times shit no <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> jesus christ okay <laughs> so if that's not an argument for moving all well, toilet paper to the sewer i've never heard yes. one yeah <laughs> so and with that positive the good thing you told nope. me about it's a topic we shouldn't you know we should avoid when we are close to him. <laughs> Toilet paper. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. My God. Uh, okay. 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 Cool. Well, thanks, Fabio, for coming. Giving us Thank some laughs. Coming for... relief. Cool. <laughs> and hopefully we'll see you soon. And thanks, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you all next week. So see you later. Thank you, Thank man. You guys. See you.